I'm going to cover a lot of information quickly, uh, and I appreciate your attention. I'll make best use of your time. And really what today is about is the architecture of this stage, which is called the formation stage. What this stage is basically is just the assembly of 20 individuals from the metropolitan area uh, that will be joining, uh, really serving as the champions of this movement. And so to have this team uh, be as influential as they can be, as engaged as they can be, will instill really maximum confidence in potential investors. And so that's really the goal of this team assembly. So for this reason, that new board is ideally comprised of, of employees from the corporate sector, um, ideally from companies with nationally recognizable brands or locally recognizable brands. And obviously, these typical directors come from the corporate sector. They're bringing access to startup capital from their employers. Uh, these companies typically have a philanthropic budget or a foundation. Um, and it's not a requirement that our directors come from the corporate sector, but it is certainly helpful, and we'll talk about some exceptions here in just a little bit. But that formation stage follows the exploratory phase, in which really that's when Michelle and I came up to Chicago and did the presentation, uh, really just to see what kind of purchase we could get in the short visit. And coming out of that meeting with five directors is something we have not done in any other city. So we are really off and running in Chicago. It's an outstanding start. Uh, with a goal of 20, we're 25% of the way there, and we this is our first meeting. So congratulations, everybody, for, uh, for such a, an achievement <laughs> before we even got started. We have this document, uh, the board matrix, which I sent you this morning, both by a hyperlink and attached to the email. Uh, we will share this with you. Uh, each time we have the call, it's best to have it open during the call, and I'll explain why in just a minute. But to back up, this is a Google Doc, which means that if you are looking at the hyperlink, you can actually watch me or Michelle edit this document in real time. It's a little bit creepy, but that way you know exactly what information uh, is known to the team. Our role in this process is really uh, the equivalent of air traffic control. And what that means is that you all obviously in this scenario, would be the planes, and we're looking for new directors, additional planes. We want to make sure that uh, we're flying in alignment and that, for example, uh, Manny and Stacy and Mike don't all go after uh, Target, for example. And then we all come back to the next meeting and say, hey, I found a great contact at Target, and it's three different people. Uh, so you can see how that would get awkward pretty quickly. So our job is to collect the information, assess candidates, uh, either in these calls or between calls, and then really kind of give the go-ahead to pursue them or to just assess whether it's a good fit or not, and if not, why not, and just talk about talk that through. We will often have, especially as the team gets bigger, uh, folks that have multiple contacts, uh, say Manny knows somebody at Target, and Mike also knows somebody from Target, and we assess who has the warmer approach, uh, who's closer to that prospect or to that candidate or who has the most influential candidate uh, that can be added to the team. So it's, it's really about how can we position this assembly uh, to be as influential as possible. And we talk a lot about the sphere of influence. We're trying to create a team of leaders that represent your city, but also can turn the heads of their own employers as well as uh, other companies. So we've got a great jump on that already, and, um, and we look forward to growing that both influence and numbers um, over the coming weeks. So the Google Doc uh, is kind of our Bible at this time. And if you look through the board matrix, you can see that it's got uh, a couple of separate parts here. We've got confirmed directors at the top. Just below that, we have some current prospects. And prospects are folks that are likely to join the team. Um, we have another term called contacts. Contacts and prospects are a little different. Prospects are folks that we actually want to join this team. Contacts are folks that say, you know what, I'm not going to join, but I will help you find someone to join the team. So they're not going to join the team, but they may help us recruit. If you go down a little bit further, you'll see we have director vacancies listed um, and some valuable skill sets here. Whether it's companies or skill sets, we've got a couple that are of high value, um, including our largest investors, and happily we've got great representation there, Stanley Black & Decker, Home Depot. Uh, we are working with Frank Barr, who was at the meeting, to bring UPS to the table. Law firms, also very valuable. 
um, an in-house attorney. So for example, if we bring in an attorney that works for General Electric, you can see how that's really kind of a home run because we're bringing in the skill set and a company with a long history of philanthropy. Communications and PR is valuable. Um, HR, an accountant, CPA, very valuable. And then of course, community affairs, real estate, and perhaps a government, uh, recognizing the role of government in Chicago, that would be a great add to the team as well. So as we're going through this list, we'll track everything here. Um, any ideas that folks bring up, say, say if uh, Becky says, hey, you know what, I actually know somebody at uh, Wells Fargo, I will add them to the current prospects section of that first page. And, uh, and that way we'll know that, uh, that that company really is kind of claimed uh, by Becky at this time. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but this really is kind of the, the architecture of moving ahead. And whenever you think of a company um, or a prospect, um, you can look here to see if anyone else is pursuing it at this time. And then you and I, uh, the directors and I, will talk through each candidate as well, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So Toolbank USA's role really as the air traffic controller. Then the question becomes, who are we looking for? Who, what, are, what are the ideal candidates? This is a pretty, um, it's a pretty squishy process, you know, obviously trying to find the right people. And the best way to describe it is we're looking for people with two qualities. One of which is, is that they get, they hear about the tool bank and they immediately say, you know what, that's really cool. I, I love tools or I love the city or I've served on a lot of nonprofits and that just makes a lot of sense because I've done projects and there are not a lot of tools. So they're really just fired up about it. As soon as they hear the idea of the tool bank, it just catches fire with them. So they have a definite interest, and they're intrigued. The other aspect that we're looking for is folks that are influential. Folks that can, as I mentioned, that have some gravity in their local community. Um, this is typically a mid to upper level manager. Um, you know, And that way, they can have some influence within their company and within other companies. Now, if we have... What I have found in my experience of doing this is that there's a happy medium. If we are going after the CEO of GE and he happens to live in Chicago, this is probably not the person that's going to start uh, going to serve on a startup board. They're looking to serve on the opera. They're looking to serve on your you know your largest nonprofits where it's really kind of a prestige, rather than this kind of roll your sleeves up. Let's start entrepreneurially, and so that's at the other end where they're just utterly influential, but they probably aren't going to be in a position to help. At the other end of the spectrum, you've got inspiration. And an example I can provide of somebody who is just all fired up about the tool bank, but not a great fit might be someone that just graduated high school, um, or rather college. Uh, they've graduated college. Maybe they did a quick stint in AmeriCorps. They, they heard about the tool bank in Atlanta. They moved to Chicago. They don't know anybody. And, uh, but they really like the tool bank idea and they want to help. Now, this person obviously is great. Their energy is great. But what we need is connectivity and influence uh, to be able to pull this off. Who do they know in the local market that they can bring to the table with the tool bank? And so trying to find that happy medium of folks that think this is an inspiring idea and folks that are very well connected, uh, there's always kind of that balance right in the center. So that's typically who we're looking for. And as I mentioned, those candidates are almost always from the corporate sector. There are exceptions, of course, um, in every city. And they, they include folks that, you know, you've got folks that kind of go in and out of the public sector. Um, they may have recently held a public office, and they are typically bringing a pretty vast network. Uh, and they have kind of that instant recognition in the local community. Um, or they might be somebody of significant personal wealth if there's someone in the community who has, uh, you know, for example, maybe sold a highly prominent business and they are looking for kind of a new mountain to climb in some ways. We've had that experience in other cities as well. So they may not come with a company, but they're just a, a, a luminary in the community uh, that's well known. People hear that name, they're like, oh, if they're associated with this project, it must be good. So that's kind of the, the who are we looking for. And then we'll go over the where to find them real quick. Let's start with where to find them. If you take a look at the Google Doc, you'll see at the bottom there are three tabs. The first one is really who we're going after right now. Who are our prospects? 
and who is on the team. At the top of it, it will always list all the confirmed directors and your contact information. You'll also notice in column I, uh, I will be adding all of the LinkedIn contact, uh, a LinkedIn hyperlink. LinkedIn is, is worth a gajillion dollars. I spend way too much time on LinkedIn, but you know what? It's a great place to prospect for potential candidates because folks that are in LinkedIn see value in networking. And if you're not in LinkedIn, I would strongly recommend that you get involved in LinkedIn uh, because it's a great tool for to use as a director. Uh, successful directors really look at LinkedIn as a real asset, so I'd strongly recommend that. And then, of course, as soon as you join, if you're just joining into it, be sure and link up with your other directors on the team. Okay. The last tab uh, at the bottom there, it says 430-2013 roster. Those are all the folks that participated in the meeting. And in the middle one is the one that we're going to focus on right now, key company. I did a very quick, low-hanging fruit assessment in Chicago. I pulled lists of Fortune 1000s that have a presence in Chicago. I pulled a list of largest employers that are listed in Chicago and just dropped them in here. It took me all of five minutes to come up with this list, and it is far from comprehensive, obviously. There are only 90, roughly 90 listed here. But what this is, is really just a document to help you start brainstorming about candidates. That the most ideal candidate, and maybe the most, um, what, if we had to draw up a candidate, they're probably going to be from these companies. And that way, folks from the Chicago community can look at this board and say, oh, okay, I see they have folks here from um, Galileo International. They have folks from Motorola. Newell Rubbermaid. What I don't know is this term tool bank, but what I do know is AT&T and Home Depot. And so we are literally riding the coattails of these brands into Chicago uh, and gaining the trust of potential investors. So as we start brainstorming about potential contacts and prospects, this is where we will look. Um, and obviously, this is by no means... Uh, comprehensive, and so I would fully expect the team to bring other companies to the table. We won't necessarily add them or change them here. This is just a brainstorming list to help you kind of jump off. Okay. All right, and then the process. As we, uh, as I sent out that link last week, uh, that was the recruitment information on how to do this, uh, Manny, you're a lover of baseball, and I try to use sports metaphors whenever possible. I don't understand sports, but they have great metaphors. And so uh, the process of recruitment is a lot like baseball. There's four steps, and you got to touch all four bases for the run to count. And as you can see on the recruitment page, there are those four steps. And I'm going to run through them real quick. I know everybody read that page, but I want to just kind of talk through the details as well. The first step really is to identify who is that person? Who, who is this recruit? And so as an example, Becky would either bring it up in this call or uh, can contact me directly by email or call and say, hey, you know, I think I found somebody at, uh, at um, General Mills that would be an outstanding ad. Uh, it's the head of their HR department. She's been with the company 20 years. She's been in Chicago for at least 15 of those years. And is just a real rock star in the company. And I've, she's my neighbor. I've known her for years. And I think I'd like to bring her to the team. My job then is to really do some reconnaissance on that person. And what that means is I'm going to see if I can find them on LinkedIn. I'm going to see if I can get any details about them and just kind of do some background checking on them. Why? Because... This is not a warm body approach. Any 20 people is not going to be able to pull this off. And so we're looking for those people of influence. And obviously, the very first or second folks that we go after, I want to make sure it's a great fit so that I know our directors have a good understanding of who should be on this team. But the most important thing is to bring it up to me so that I can add them to this list so that when Mike comes to me and says, hey, I know somebody at General Mills, I can say, you know what? Actually, Becky is going after somebody right now. Let's, let's just hold off on that one and see how she does. And if that doesn't pan out, then we can we can pursue your prospect as well. So the key to it really is bringing it to this team's attention, uh, uh, to me specifically, either in these calls or you are more than welcome to contact me by email or phone at any time if you've got a prospect in your midst. 
Okay. So we take a look at uh, that process, and the next step is to contact that prospect. Once you've gotten the green light from air traffic control uh, from me, you can approach them and share with them a prospectus, and I will send that out to the team shortly. Uh, actually, I've sent it to all of you. You've all read it, as a matter of fact. And you share that with the prospect and say, hey, you know, I'm a part of this movement that's coming to Chicago, and, and I think you'd be really interested in it. Um, here's some information. And, um, you know, we're trying to grow the team. You would be a tremendous asset to it. Uh, why don't you give it some consideration? They will, over time, give it a read. And uh, the key, the next step is really to follow up with them and, and see if they are interested. It's very rare that folks will opt in and really chase you down. If Mike contacts somebody and says, hey, I think you really should join this team. This is right up your alley. You're big in the community. You love serving on boards. And this is really fits you to a T. If that's true of that person, they're probably really busy. And so we want to make sure that uh, their time is well spent. But if they're really busy, Mike's probably going to have to follow up again. And so by following up again and just saying, hey, just wanted to see if you read that material, that's really where the, the rubber hits the road. And they're like, oh, okay, this is important to Mike. It should be important to me. I'm going to read that material and get back to Mike. And they're like, you know what? I am busy, but I'm going to give this a try because it sounds intriguing. Mike's involved. Let's do it. And then the last step is really my approval. And that sounds strange to say that, but it's critical that this person have access to me or to Michelle, and in this case specifically me, to talk with them and answer any questions they have. They have been brought to the table because of your passion for the tool bank, and they'll stick to the table because of the confidence that we have that we're going to succeed. And so when they say, you know what, Becky, that sounds really interesting. Um, what's the startup budget, and how many shovels are you going to have, and what's the size of the building? Becky may not have those answers, but we do. And so we can provide those nuts and bolts answers that are really going to provide the confidence for them to join the team. I ask them very explicitly to join this team. Can you commit to this team? Can you commit to the weekly calls? And if they say, yes, absolutely, this is great, then I add them to the Chicago board matrix. We got one more team member, and I will announce it to the team by email, and, and we're off to, uh, well, we've got one more seat filled. We continue that process through our weekly calls, and we continue to add folks uh, until we hit 20. And then we've got a new set of tasks that unleash, but uh, we'll talk about those when we get there. But that really is the recruitment process in a nutshell. One of the, one of the big hazards of this process is if I give a director a call and I say, hey, how, how's the prospecting going? And they say, it's great. I've got 12 prospects going. They're, they're super. You're going to love these folks. There's a couple of guys from the corporate sector I've got to found. And this is news to me. They've already contacted the prospect. They've already talked it up. I don't know what the companies are. These planes are flying blind. And so they may be contacting somebody that Manny's already speaking to, that Stacy is speaking to, and we may have a collision midair, which would be bad. So it's always best, uh, if you've got a prospect that comes to mind, to contact me by email or give me a call and just say, hey, how, do you, how does this person look? Sounds like a good fit. I'd love to chat it through with you. What do you think? Air traffic control gives it the green light, and then you can go after them, making sure that there's no one else that is pursuing that company or that person. Okay? So it's very, orchest you know, very orchestrated uh, as we go forward to ensure that we don't take a warm body approach and that we're bringing people to the team that can really maximize the influence um, of the assembly once we reach 20.